morning, my soccer universe. Well, uh, let's talk about the games that I watched yesterday. Um, I actually started off with um, a little bit Italian action. No, I actually start, started off with Crystal Palace City, uh, but it was already one nothing for City when I uh, watched it, and uh, it was quickly halftime. So I said, ah. There's in Italy, there's a Genoa derby. Watch that one. Um, not for long though, it was 1 0 Sampdoria. I haven't seen the highlights yet because I couldn't find them quickly this morning. So it was 1 0 for Sampdoria, and then I think in the 50th minute was already the big decision of uh, the game where it was a clear handball in the box uh, of Genoa. Um, I think it was ahead of Cagliarella. Uh, might be wrong on that. Um, that was a clear penalty. However, the referee also gave a red card, uh, although the ball jumped on his hand, uh, kind of saying he took away a goal scoring chance. I thought this was super, super harsh. I'm again like a white green sun. Um, that they had was a little bit harsh in Cagliarella and slots the penalty home. There were a few chances for, uh, you know, Panda tried to get then another penalty for Genoa, but never was going to happen. But I quickly saw, yeah, I think that game is done and dusted. I mean, if you're two goals up and the, uh, and the opponent is a man down, um, there's not too much um, excitement in that game anymore, unless you're, of course, a fan of either, either, either one of those teams. And so I decided, let's go to another game. And, you know, it was... I told my wife, family, 5.30, I want to watch uh, Liverpool Chelsea, the rest, let's see, it, there, will be, there will be something on. So I flipped over um, to Fiorentina Bologna, which had the same horrid weather that they had in Rome. Uh, absolutely soaked pitch, uh, everything absolutely soaked, <laughs> uh, which again will mean that the game will not be that great, unfortunately. Um, I saw a good chance by Muriel, I saw some crazy defending um, on the part of Fiorentina, I think at one part the time the goalkeeper came out uh, with the two, to defend closer to the to midfield, but I uh, couldn't get to, to the ball, but there were enough defenders on the back that Bologna didn't know what to do with the shot, and in, in the end Vera two actually could uh, run back and save it. Um, those were exciting scenes. Uh, Chiesa, who I thought is injured, but I was very happy to see him playing because if Chiesa is playing, uh, the game is usually exciting. Not always, but usually it's, a, it's an exciting game. It's, he's a really exciting player. Uh, probably one of my favorite Serie A players at the moment. Um, I just hope he doesn't go to Inter. But yeah. Uh, that were the exciting scenes in the end. Uh, it ended nil-nil and this is the first game with Montella in charge. I mean, I didn't really get why Pioli stepped down. There was seemingly, they said he has a lack of professionalism or something to that regard. I, I, seem, I, I was sad to see Pioli step down because I think the team overall played well. They just didn't have the results, uh, which yeah, it's never a good thing. But I think uh, it could have made quite some. Fiorentina is a, was a really exciting team to watch. Maybe at the Montella they will be as well. But then it was all Liverpool Chelsea. I think all my mental efforts <laughs> went to instead that game at me despite uh, telling my kids to come and sit with me and they trying to, to distract me. Um, yeah, it was only going that way. I think I saw a little bit of Saint Etienne against Bordeaux, uh, which was interesting jersey wise because Bordeaux white, light pink and um, navy jerseys, so, but uh, I know it ain't in 3-0, three, three but that was it. Anyway, uh, Liverpool Chelsea, I have to say from the get-go it was a great match and yes, at the beginning they were uh, remembering 30 years of the Hillsborough disaster and um, I don't want to mention now because I made a whole other video that I will post I decided at the same time as this one link up there where my thoughts on Hillsborough are because um, it brought 
back to me some memories of when I was really uh, researching the Hillsborough disaster um, and just my personal take on the whole thing. So, uh, link up there. Anyway, the game itself was a really fast one but without many great chances in the first half. I think there was one by Salah in the sixth minute, then the, uh, Chelsea was always, you know, especially Villian, always seemed to be uh, too often too free, but um, then in the end, in the end it, it came to no avail. Uh, Azar came free once, all, all, all the safety. I think the biggest chance was by Mané, uh, who was, uh, got the ball, I think, from Salah and put it over the bar. But, while it was intense, it was going up and down, it didn't have much goal mouth action. So uh, from that point, it was maybe not the most exciting game, but you could feel the tension in the air. And with City having won before, yes, I started out with 1-0, I did mention City made 1-3-1. Uh, so Raheem Sterling made two goals. Uh, I saw the second goal, which was quite nicely taken, and if I see, look at everything, I mean City thoroughly dominated that game. Yeah, we'll talk about City and uh, Liverpool in the end. Let's go back to the game. So the first half, there was a certain nervous energy uh, in the game, but it also was it was quite intense. It was fast paced. Uh, it was exciting to watch. In a way, although I, I, I would say with not too many goal chances, it was maybe not the most exciting games that you could see. Uh, that changed in the end. The second half. To me, I thought oh, this is gonna be one of those games again that end will end nil nil with a uh, lot, lot of intensity but not much going. No, I was wrong. Uh, right from the get go, Liverpool actually ratcheted it up a little bit and went for the kill. Um, and it was a scene where Firmino played a ball to Salah, who didn't give up on it, played it back to Henderson. Walk out and chipped it nicely over uh, Kepa and so that Mane had just an easy uh, header to make it 1 0 for Liverpool. This was a really well played goal. Uh, I gotta say, uh, I know when Salah didn't get the ball uh, very well, I actually gave almost a little bit up on all of them, but I saw how Anderson is walking around him uh, uh, towards the touchline. I really like goals that where uh, there is teamwork. I think those are the best goals. Now you can argue, and I will not argue with uh, ma many of you, that two minutes later Salah scored an absolute screamer. Well, that was probably a more spectacular goal. I'm not sure if it's a better goal, but it's a more spectacular goal. Takes the ball, he's on the outside and just takes a shot. Kepa maybe should have made an additional step, but I don't want to take away from uh, the awesomeness of that goal. He took a really nice serve uh, into the corner, 2 0 Liverpool, and I think Paul of Anfield breathed a sigh of relief. You can feel the tension, you know that Manchester City is that is a better team and in order if you want to have any chance for this championship you need to win every game it is unbelievable the pressure that is on Liverpool. Liverpool I almost have the feeling they are a great team but they are stretched to the max uh, they cannot let let go and I would even say if Liverpool wins out they probably win the title uh, but you gotta win out and sigh of relief and then Chelsea for the next 10 minutes came back roaring and I think it was five minutes later when uh, Edna Saar got a really nice ball he's alone in front of Allison. Allison comes out and he takes the shot and hits the post I thought this is going this is going in for sure no hits the post that was a big let off then uh, just a few minutes later and again Azar clear in front of the goalkeeper the goalkeeper saves it uh, at that point Chelsea actually showed that they are a really really good team as well and I think if they would have gotten the goal I'm, I'm not sure how the game would, where, would, would have gone in the end Liverpool then 
was a little bit closer to the third, but I think everyone knew this is gonna end to nil, to nil, to nil and that's where uh, it's left. And I think there was a good chance by Manet who did a bit like run uh, where I think he, he, he couldn't pull it on goal in, in the end. But it ends to nil Liverpool and yeah, they're back in first place, but they have a game more points ahead of City. It is absolutely tight race, a tight race. Liverpool has four more games and all seem winnable. Um, the last two Newcastle away from home and Wolves at home. I mean Wolves, I'm not sure that doesn't seem too, um, too easy either, but you know Wolves is going nowhere. And then Manchester City's fate is basically decided in the next few days. Um, they have Spurs at home and then they should play Manchester United. Um, and I think it is Spurs. But I gotta have a feeling that Manchester City will go through these games winning. But I don't know, maybe they trip up somewhere else. I have a feeling if, if Liverpool manages to win out, they will become champions. The craziness is that with the points total that Liverpool already has, they would be champions in almost any other season. Um, and quickly back to Hillsborough, I thought I, I think it would be great if Liverpool, uh, at the, around the 30th anniversary of the Hillsborough disaster, would win the title. I think this would, would be a nice symbolic thing, but uh, it's too close to call. I give, I still give the edge to City. I still give the edge to City. Because Liverpool seems to be too stretched, and it got to me um, this uh, in the evening that you know when I'm talking Champions League, my Champions League pre predictions all everyone's looking at a Juve Barcelona final or something like that, and then I got thinking you know I don't want to have a Juve Liverpool final um, just for the simple reason I don't want to see that again and all the polemics around the Hazel and you don't need. I, th I think this would, would be the most troublesome final in many ways, uh, even if everyone would try to uh, diminish that. But then it came to me. To me, it's not inconceivable that we get a City Liverpool final. Actually, to, to the point, I know that I don't want to discount uh, Juve, I don't want to discount Barcelona. Um, but those two teams, what speaks for that final is that those two teams have to give it their all every day. Juve is cruising, Barcelona is cruising. Yes, it might be nice to rest a few players here and there and maybe, but uh, overall, I think this competitive spirit that those two have might lead them to a Champions League, an All-English Champions League final. And that's gonna be interesting and I actually uh, was thinking it will probably go if that would happen if that that would happen I know City wants to win the Champions League I can see Liverpool more winning the Champions League if that was happen than uh, the champ than the league which is exactly the opposite things that people want to have or well, yes if I do that I can get the Sun away I need to watch the lights here, that's why I'm a little bit hunched over. Uh, you know, in Austria we have the lights here hanging right at the edge of the intersection. It's really hard to see, especially if you're in the top position as I am, pole position. <laughs> but I'm not gonna race here. So yeah, uh, I know my pick was uh, Juve Barcelona final. But if I think about it a little bit more, I actually want to say um, City Liverpool final is not all that impossible. But yeah, it's gonna be big. I think this is uh, one of the most exciting title challenges in a long time, and it's so crazy. I mean, it it reminds me of some of those Barcelona Real Madrid title challenges where both teams are winning like crazy, and you just cannot afford to lose. You've gotta win. Um, which is not all that great overall, I have to say, because it shows you that uh, there are two teams above everyone else, uh, you know, in a large, large, larger picture. Watching it, it's wonderful. It's one, 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 because there's a whole lot of suspense. Well, 
uh, then I didn't watch, I mean I saw Na Napoli winning against uh, Kievo, that wasn't, I didn't see it, I saw the result. Uh, so you were no champions yet, but we knew that. Anyway, um, I wanted to watch the Valencia Derby, which I saw that uh, in a 3 1 for Valencia. Um, a wonderful own goal to make the one goal for uh, Levante. But right thereafter, the guy who made the own goal assisted to both, both the two other goals. So Valencia Cruz is there. That was like actually the game that I was intending to watch, but then I saw there is the big clash in France between Lille and PSG. Nothing at stake except that if PSG gets a draw, they are champions. Uh, and it was a heated game that ended completely unexpected. Um, I saw only a little bit and I watched the highlights this morning because uh, I wanted to know what was happening. First of all, um, Lille took uh, a, a lead by, uh, through an goal by Meunier. Uh, just the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, I think Kiara made the equalizer. 1-1 one, one, and then um, no, Bernat. Bernat made the equalizer and then um, he was sent off for um, yeah yellow red I think and then Mbappé should have also been sent, sent off for a reckless challenge uh, which he did or, or obviously didn't but so it is 1-1 one, one, um, with PSG a man down and Lil really agitated by uh, those two fouls. I know at halftime it really seemed that the game is falling apart. Um, PSG then tried to get something, I think Kiara, that's why Kiara had a good chance. But in the end, uh, it was a counter record by Pepe that made it 2 1. And from then on, all hell broke loose on PSG. They end up losing 5 1, which I think uh, they said they haven't lost like that in over 30 years, uh, that high. And given the squad that they have, this is an embarrassment. And I have to say, I don't want that too clean as that it gets fired, but these are exactly the results that show. You cannot wrap it up and I cannot imagine that they're giving away this huge lead. But it would be the most PSG thing to do that if they... Uh, end up now losing the rest of the season. It's not gonna happen. I am aware of that. Uh, I think they have the game against in Nantes um, at the end of the uh, in midweek where they probably will wrap, wrap up the title. But that gotta hurt. Losing 5-1 to Lille, that really gotta hurt. And it shows you on PSG there is nothing to play for. We know that they will be the next champions at least since December. They were at that huge, huge of a lead, so um, yeah, it's just a little bit of a, in a way, a pity because I think this squad could play a really exciting soccer. But you know, champ, champ, champ is done, and if you dominate the league, this is usually not, not going well for your for your European ambitions. Anyway, so that was a big, uh, nice cap on the weekend with a pretty big result that will have no impact on the championship but it sends a message. Lil is a team uh, to be reckoned with. And also uh, Lyon beat them already so the second and third place teams there will be there's the answer is the second and third place. Although Lyon is hitting a really rough uh, spot in the season as well. They seem like they might challenge for second, but I think they will have a hard time holding on to third with their uh, bad run of results as of late. So, I'm gonna do a big roundup video this evening. I know there's a big evening game in Italy with uh, Atalanta uh, that can draw level with Milan again. Um, there might be some other Monday night. Uh, yeah, our Arsenal is playing Monday night too. So that's uh, interesting, but as usual, I won't have those games in there, but I will make a video any, anyway and um, just mention how things might change and maybe in the final video you will actually see the corrected standings. Again, let me know which games you watched. I think most of will watch will have watched Liverpool against 
Chelsea, it was the big matchup of the weekend. Um, and yeah, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. As I say, I'm posting a lot and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.